Are you looking for a better way to chill your hot wort at the end of a boil, while at the same time saving on water? Well, if you are, keep watching. I have a solution for you. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Larry again. Today I am building a recirculating wort chiller. And I'm doing this from a, uh, from a necessity, a need of my own here. Uh, for years and years I would brew beer. I would chill down the wort with a, an immersion chiller and the uh, water that went through it would just be wasted out the discharge tube and you know down a driveway, down a sink, whatever. And it was really wasteful and uh, you know it would waste 30 plus gallons or, or more of water trying to chill the work down to pitching temperatures which barely got below 80 degrees anyway so i figured I, I you know i gotta find a way to chill it down a little bit quicker a little bit colder and save on water and what i found online looking up things is uh coming up with a little recirculating work chiller idea where you actually uh, take a sort of a some submersible pump and you uh and, and some ice in an ice water bath and you discharge and you and you turn it on and you actually uh, chill the water down to a much colder temperature, send it through the wort chiller, the, um, the, and then it comes out and right back into the same bucket or, or cooler that you were using anyway. So it just recirculates the water over and over again. So that's going to save a lot of water. The downside is that you need ice to, to keep it chilled. So that's the trade-off. But if you'd like to see how I do this, keep watching. What we have here is the equipment I'm going to use today. So for, for starters, you need an immersion chiller like this one here. I've had this one for probably 16 years now. Bought it from a local homebrew shop. I'm guessing it's about 20 feet of coil, 3 8 OD copper tubing, okay? But I also had to retrofit this thing a while ago for, for some other needs. I, I attached some, some garden hose adapters on here so I can actually attach a garden hose to this thing that power this thing during the war warmer weather. Also um, for a discharge as well. It gives me flexibility to do what I'm, what I'm about to do here is have a, a new means of chilling my work with this recirculation method, okay? Secondly, you'll need some kind of submersible recirculation pump, and this thing here you see is a 500 gallon per hour rated fountain pump from Home Depot with a half inch tube adapter on top, okay? And then of course the tubing is a half inch ID clear vinyl tubing. I bought a 10 foot coil, but I'm not gonna use all of this. I also have a number of fittings here. I also have the garden hose adapter that, that goes on the garden hose adapter itself, as well as a, a half inch hose barb that will attach to it like that and attach to there, as well as uh, some hose clamps and some Teflon tape. So let's get started. I'm going to take this hose. It's 10 feet in length. I bought it as a pre-rolled uh, and pre-sold, pre-cut length at the hardware store. I'm going to cut it in half right down the middle, five feet on each side for starters. And I may shorten it up after that, but for starters, I'm just going to cut this thing right in half. Just like that, there we go. Two five foot lengths, approximately. Now take each of your vinyl tubing pieces one at a time, slide one of the clamps on behind it. Go ahead and put the tip in some really hot water here. I heated this up in a microwave for a few minutes, got it really nice and hot. And what we're doing here is that we're softening the tube so it'll stretch over this half inch um, ID barb here. So. If I don't do this, it'll be really hard to like put the vinyl tubing on this. So you soak it for, for I don't know, half a minute, a minute or so. Then pull it out and slide the barb right up in there just like that. See? That was really easy to do because I warmed it up. Now I can actually slide my hose clamp over the top and tighten it down. Just like that. I'll take some Teflon tape, or some thread sealing tape here, and go ahead and wrap it. I'll take your garden hose adapter here, and go ahead and screw it on, and tighten it up. Just like that. Now take the other end of one of your hoses, put the final hose clamp over it like this, and soak it in the hot water as well to soften up the end so I can insert it over this half inch 
uh, outlet here. Okay, let's go ahead and slide it on. See how it's really easy. I'll go ahead and put the hose clamp on and tighten that up. Okay, there we go. So this is now coming along nicely. One other thing that you might want to do, which I will do myself, is I'm going to wrap the external threads of the garden hose adapter that goes into the uh, fittings on the immersion chiller with some of the tape as well so it won't leak. There we go, got them wrapped up. Now take each, uh, each hose, uh, depending on which one you want to plug into it, I'm going to plug my, my pump exit hose into the right side here. So I'm going to screw that on. So now my discharge hose goes here, like that. And now the result is what you see here. I just did the immersion coil, everything's hooked up, and the pump, everything's ready to go. So let's give this thing a, uh, a test run and see where it leaks and, and uh, get that addressed. I have this all set up now and sort of a test run to check for leaks here. So I have the little pump submerged over here in the corner. I have the discharge hose clamped to the side of my cooler here so it doesn't come flying out. You can see there's uh, water coming out of there at a pretty good rate too. It's about the flow rate I would use uh, normally when I would just discharge the water into the grass and garden. So uh, that's that looks like a good flow rate to me. So this pump can certainly do the job. And uh, I've been checking on leaks over here to the right, looking for leaks along the compression fittings, uh, the screw-on fittings. No leaks whatsoever, but this is uh, really good. So now I'm curious as to what the flow rate is. What I'm going to do to test the flow rate here, I'm going to take a one-gallon uh, jug here. I'm going to put the discharge hose in it. I'm going to turn this thing on and time it and see uh, how long it takes to fill up a gallon. And I'm going to calculate a, a flow rate. Okay, there we go. So filled it up uh, about one minute and eight seconds. That flow rate worked out to be about 0.9 gallons per minute, which is just under a gallon, which is uh, you know just about where I want it to be. I want it to be right around a gallon. So I picked a pump that was uh, at the max of its capacity and it's sufficient for what I'm doing. But if I had to go back to the store and rebuy, I would probably pick a slightly larger model. Other than that, it worked out pretty well. It, uh, it, it'll do its job. Uh, stay tuned for an upcoming video though, where I will be doing an actual performance test of this thing while brewing a natural batch of beer. So make sure you subscribe and uh, keep watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.